All right, now let's look at all the notes of this instrument. Now, these are often tuned um, a little bit different. This one is in C, which means the middle note, the longest one, is a C note. And oftentimes, unless you have a really big thumb harp, it'll be all in one key. Now, we could change that if we wanted to, but typically when you buy them, they'll be in one key. So this is in the key of C. So we have C as the longest one, and this is middle C. It's our lowest note that we can possibly play. And then D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we're at a new C. So an octave difference. Then we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C again, C, D, E. So we have a C, an octave higher C, two octaves higher C, and then two more notes after that. And once again, this is only in the key of C, so we don't have any sharps or flats, only natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's it. This makes it really easy to play, and it makes it really easy to improvise with and just play along with. What this does is um, most all the notes you're going to be hitting are not going to sound wrong, like sometimes with other instruments, if you hit, like, you're playing in the key of C and you hit a, a random F sharp on accident, it will sound wrong. If you hit a F, it may not sound perfectly in place, but it's not going to sound blatantly wrong. So you can have a lot of fun playing arrangements and stuff, which we'll go into later on also. Hey everyone, so right now we're going to look at the notes on the thumb harp in detail. So the way that it's set up, you see here, is there's smaller ones on either side and the tines get larger and larger until you get to the very center, which is your lowest note. The longer the tine, the lower the note is. So the C is the longest note and our lowest note on our C tuned um, thumb harp. And one note to the left is D and then one note to the right of it is E. And what happens is it goes up one on each side continually throughout the entire thumb harp. So C, next note over is D, and then on the right side is E, on the left side is F, right side is G, and it starts all over again at A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we're at A again, A, B, C, D, E. So the reason that they have it like this is so that if you were playing a lot of notes all the way up a scale, like C, D, E, F, G, then you're not doing everything with one thumb. Bum, 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 bum. You can go back and forth. Bum, 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 bum. It allows you to play things faster and with more ease this way than if you were just, if it was just small on one side and then getting larger and larger or lower notes on the other side. If you had that, you would almost always be tripping over your own thumbs. This way it's kind of broken up into two different halves so that you can play them back and forth easier. What this does also is it allows you to play runs a lot faster, but it's a little harder to play chords in some ways as we'll look at later. So my suggestion would be that you print up the chart that I have printed here, this exact picture, and then just play along with it so that you can really tell where the notes are. You'll see this one. This is a picture of my specific kalimba, and I've put um, literally just some fingernail polish on this. I grab my daughter's fingernail polish and put it on the notes that are all the way to the bottom. The blue that goes all the way to the bottom is all of my C's. So C, C, and C. Now this is just the easiest way for me to remember where all the notes are quickly. And all the E's I have halfway up, E, E, E. And then the G's I have a blue way up high. So G and G. There's only two G's in this. So what it allows me to do is really understand where I am. If I have to hit F, which is right in between E and G, I know exactly where it is on the 
opposite side of this. It allows me to see where the triads are, like once again, we'll look at in a little bit. Hey everyone, so this is what we're going to be going over in this thumb harp course. We're going to be going over the instrument, the physical aspects of this instrument. We're going to be going over the notes, different techniques to play it, and that's all the very basics. Next we're going to go over some music theory, and music theory is just what and how to play music. So we're going to be going over how to play melodies, a little bit of sheet music involved in that. We're also going to be going over how to play arrangements or the background music um, that goes behind the melodies. On top of that we're also going to be learning chords. Chords are often what is the arrangement or what is um, part of the arrangement. We are going to be learning a couple of simple songs. One song is just going to be melody, another song is going to be melody and arrangement, and then we're going to have a way that you can practice and play along with me doing that. And lastly, we're going to learn the basics of how to find and play your own songs. There's some basic rules of thumb of how to find music that will work for you and will work for the instrument that you've bought and you're playing with. 